In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to use the Smith chart to design an impedance matching network, in this case an L network. Uh, we'll use that to take our complex load and transform it into the system impedance, in this case 50 ohms. The L network is a very simple two element uh, matching network. And it's called an L simply because of the shape of the arrangements of the components in a schematic. Uh, it will typically consist of either a series element and a shunt element. That shunt element will either appear across the load or across the input, depending on the nature of the uh, load that we're trying to match to the system impedance. I've shown these as LC matching networks, uh, but the, you really can also build this with two inductors or two capacitors arranged in either direction. So let's go take a look at the approach. You may remember from video number 274 that adding an inductor or capacitor in series with a load will rotate us on the Smith chart along the constant resistance circles, which are these red circles that are all tangent to the open circuit point on the Smith chart here. Adding a shunt inductor or capacitor, or adding a capacitor and inductor in parallel with a load, will rotate us on the Smith chart along the constant conductance circles, which are these blue circles that are all tangent to the short circuit uh, end of the Smith chart. So which way do we rotate along these circles? There's actually a little bit of a trick that I use. When we're talking about adding inductors, either uh, in series or in parallel, that always rotates us up through the real axis, the real axis being the center axis here. So we can see adding a series inductor rotates us up in this direction along the constant resistance circles. Adding a shunt inductor rotates us up along the constant conductance circles in this direction. So you can think about this as adding an L that's elevating us or elevating us up and rotating up on the Smith chart. Now as you might imagine, adding a capacitor will rotate us down. Uh, so whether that capacitor is in series with our load, we're going to rotate down on the resistance circles, or that capacitor is a, in parallel or a shunt capacitor, we're going to rotate down along the constant conductance circles. And again, C for crashing down or going down on the Smith chart. So it's a pretty easy way to remember how we move around on the Smith chart by adding a series of shunt inductor or capacitor. Now while the L network is uh, very simple and easy to design, one network configuration can't be used to match all possible load impedances. So this uh, set of yin-yang drawings here of the Smith chart uh, basically show you what impedances can be matched by each of these four configurations of the L network. Now you may notice that for some uh, impedances, like let's say the, our impedance was down in this area, that could be matched by either a series C and shunt L or by a shunt C and series L because either one of those are in the unshaded areas. So when you have two possibilities, which one do you use? Well, there could be a number of configurations. If you look at, uh, like a, as I described, a, a load that is down in this area that could be matched by either of these two networks, you might say, well, this one is essentially a high-pass network. This one is a low-pass network. So this one might be favorable because it might help to reject some higher order harmonics that might be coming from your transmitter. But at the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference and even maybe what components you have on hand. And of course, let's not forget that the L network can either be all capacitors or all inductors. And I've got similar diagrams here to show you what impedances can be matched using these configurations. They're not as uh, commonly used because the range of load impedances that can be matched is smaller, given the smaller area here uh, contained in the unshaded area of these Smith charts. Here's our design process. We first plot the load impedance wherever it is on the Smith chart. And then working from that, we want to add a series or shunt, L or C, to rotate along the constant resistance or constant conductance circles until we reach either the unity resistance circle or the unity conductance circle. And then we record how far we've moved in either reactance or susceptance to get there. Then we add a series or shunt inductor uh, to rotate along the unity resistance or unity conductance circle to reach the center and record how far we went in that case. And then from those uh, movements or the lengths of those arcs in either 
reactance or susceptance, we can then compute the co capacitive and inductive reactance of the components at our operating frequency, uh, and there uh, you and use that to compute the actual capacitor and inductor values. And it may sound confusing. Let's actually go do it in a real example, and you'll see it's actually not that hard. I'm going to be using the same uh, 33 ohm and 220 picofarad series combination load that I used in the previous video to kind of show how to plot the impedance. And we're going to impedance match that one. Now in order to be able to put my L network together, I've inserted in series here just a little fixture that allows me to put a component in series and a component in parallel with uh, our given load. So we can actually see the, the results of this on the VNA. Now as shown in the previous video, here is our load impedance so right here on the Smith chart. Uh, if you really pay attention, you may notice that this, uh, this plot is actually ever so slightly to the left of where it was when we did it in the previous video. And that's because we've effectively added a little bit of transmission line length by adding that fixture in place. So that kind of rotated us a little bit over, but not so much that we're going to worry about here. So that's our starting point. We want to get from there right to the center of the Smith chart right here. Using the previous yin-yang diagrams, we've selected uh, this network here because that will take and properly match this uh, load impedance location. So we're going to put a, first thing we're going to do is work from our load back. So the first thing we're connecting to a load is a shunt inductor. So the shunt inductor means that we're going to ride up along the constant conductance circles here. And we want to do that until we hit this constant resistance circle. Okay. Now I also want to do it with a series capacitor. So if I rotate up here, the first place I hit that uh, unity resistance circle is right here. So I could rotate up here and then rotate that way to get to the center, but that would mean adding a shunt L and a series L. I actually want to do a shunt L and a series C. So we're going to rotate up from here until we hit the unity circle up on this side. So how far did we move? If we look very carefully, we can see that the uh, susceptance at this point is a value of 0.069. It's right adjacent to this 0 0.7 uh, susceptance line. So we're going to move 0 0.69 to here, and then if we look again carefully up to this end, we're on the 0 0.5 susceptance line. So the total distance that we've moved is 0 0.69 plus 0 0.5, or 1.19. So if our susceptance, our normalized susceptance that we moved is 1.19, uh, the inductive reactance is essentially going to be 1 over that, and then unnormalized times 50. So our capacitive reactance, excuse me, our inductive reactance of this shunt element is 42 ohms. So to calculate that back using our operating frequency of 14.2 megahertz, uh, we can compute an inductor of 471 nanohenries. Right, I've wound an inductor to be in the neighborhood of 470 nanohenries. We can stick it in the tester and uh, see what we have here. Uh, 465, that's pretty close. In fact, if we squeeze these windings together a little bit more, we can kind of tweak that value a little bit. And now we're at 482. So what we'll do is we'll stick it in and actually stick it in the fixture to do the impedance match and tweak the value there. Okay, now we're going to want to rotate up. We're not going to see the rotation, we'll just see the movement, but we want to wind up on this unity circle here, the one that goes right through the center of the Smith chart there. So let's stick my uh, inductor in parallel with the load and uh, see where we are. Actually, pretty close. Uh, we're a little bit shy, which means I need to actually reduce the inductance value ever so slightly. So let me spread those windings out a little bit here, and boom. We line right up on that line. So we've done that first arc now on our uh, uh, matching network. So now the other piece is to add our series capacitor to bring us from this point down to our matching network. And if we take a look at our uh, reactance component, our reactance component here is sitting right about 1.1. Uh, so we can uh, unnormalize that. So 1.1 times 50 gives us a 55 ohm capacitive reactance. And then we can use that to compute the actual capacitance value at our operating frequency of 14.2 megahertz, and it gives us a capacitance of about 200 picofarads, just a little bit more. So I've taken a, a pair of uh, 100 picofarad capacitors and just soldered them in parallel. And let's put that in series uh, with our network to complete the L network, and that should rotate us right into uh, the center of the Smith chart. 
All right, so I'll pull the uh, the little zero ohm jumper out that I have in uh, the series position on my fixture, and replace that with my uh, 200 picofarad capacitor. And lo and behold, if I get this connection here to go right, it's a little more reliable there. There we go. And there we go, we find ourselves actually very close to uh, the center of the Smith chart. Of course, uh, these components are not ideal, and as I touch them, I'm going to move them around a little bit, but you kind of get the idea here that uh, a simple L network, rotating on a couple of arcs uh, by adding uh, series and shunt elements, we were able to take this impedance, which was uh, way out over here on the Smith chart, and match it to our 50 ohm uh, system impedance. Now, for those that were curious of what that looked like, uh, you know, here's my uh, uh, load that we started with here. This is the 470 nanofarad uh, shunt inductor, and here's our 200 picofarad series capacitor. So we use the Smith chart to design uh, this style of network here. Now, of course, we could have also used it to design this style of network uh, by starting off by doing a series inductor and then adding the shunt capacitor or even uh, using this network down here, either one of these uh, configurations of a pair of inductors would have gotten us there as well. I hope you enjoyed this video to take a look at how to design an L matching network using the Smith chart. If you like what you see, uh, please give me a thumbs up. As always, uh, my notes from the video will appear in a, as a link to a PDF file in the show notes on the YouTube page just below uh, the video here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, uh, please do so. I'd uh, love to hear uh, your comments uh, down below, and thanks again as always for watching.